Carnita Matthews, guilty as charged, but out of jail for now. Do you have anything to say about the sentence? Is it unfair, do you think? You don't go lying about people. You don't go making up stories, and you certainly don't go grabbing on racism just to try to get your way. Well, I don't appreciate being called racist because you didn't read something properly and you're not doing the right thing. Okay. Anita Matthews didn't like being pulled over for a random breath test five months ago, believing she'd been targeted for wearing a burqa. Hey, you are racist because when you just looked at me and you see me with a niqab on, you could see something happened to you. You couldn't handle it. She didn't like being asked to reveal her face to senior constable Paul Fogarty, telling him she wasn't allowed. And a magistrate said she became verbally hysterical when she got a ticket for incorrectly displaying her P plates. You know you are giving me a ticket for crap. Go back to the car. If you choose to let take matters forward, you'll be wasting the court's time. She told the officer it was crap and accused him five or six times of being a racist, saying to him, you're going to be in trouble, 100%. If it was upheld, that would seriously damage his whole professional role in the police force. She even went to the media with her false accusation. It actually felt like he actually touched my, my vial and uh, I pulled back. But it was what she did next that landed her in big trouble. She made a formal complaint in a statutory declaration that the officer had acted in a racist manner and had even tried to rip off her veil. It is unfair and it's the ugliest accusation you can make. Fortunately, it's all there on the patrol car video, or put more accurately, not there. Thankfully, there was a camera in the back of the car that actually filmed the whole thing or that officer would be skewered. What makes her story really rich is that in court, her lawyer Stephen Hopper argued it wasn't her who made the false complaint to police. He argued that because she couldn't be seen under her burqa and no one checked her ID, it may not have been her. Now she's trying to say, no, it was another person wearing the burqa, uh, her twin. Oh, the lawyer's very clever. It's game playing. And, uh, and I think the magistrate recognised this quite early. Magistrate Robert Ravage said the evidence it was her was overwhelming. He is the hero of talkback for calling her crime malicious and ruthless and a cheap and easy shot. He sent her to jail for six months. She was out this afternoon on bail and ready to appeal. Kezar Trad from the Islamic Friendship Association of Australia says she shouldn't go to jail for the sake of her seven children. I wasn't in the court, but uh, sometimes judges like to uh, make an example of people and uh, it certainly feels that this is a case where compassion might have been uh, a much better received outcome. Why? Well, uh, we're talking about the lady who has a number of children, family commitments. Because I got my key plates on. The judge said that she had been malicious and ruthless about the police officer's life. Well, look... Uh, she didn't show compassion for him. Uh, we're talking about compassion for the children. Fairness is a two-way issue here. Radio 2GB's Jason Morrison doesn't buy it, saying she was prepared for the policeman to pay a high price. A dent on his reputation of an accusation of racism, you're never clear. It ruins a career. Fred Nile says there's one obvious solution. I believe this is now proving a strong case for a total ban on wearing a burqa. And he has plenty of support. Uh, that's our culture. I can look at you, you can look at me. That's how it works. Carnita Matthews will go to the district court to appeal the sentence. I think justice has been served and I think this is a major wake-up for a lot of people who think this is an issue that's just going to walk away. This is not. This case proves my argument. We must be an open-faced society.